Good evening. Thank you for having me, Zrajavi, dignitaries, and friends. I recognize that, like my French and Italian and American counterparts, I might be an unusual guest for the evening. This is about breaking fast in the month of Ramadan. It is a discussion of faith. But in truth, I am an American of Italian descent, raised in a Christian home. But I believe that my own journey in my faith has relevance in what we discuss tonight. You see, as I have gotten older, I have discovered that in life, you accept the inconsistencies of life and you fail, or you rise above them and reconcile them and you've lived a good life. You face that in Islam. I faced it in Christianity. The Christianity that I learned from my mother was about love and brotherhood. In life, I learned it was also about the Inquisition and the Crusades. I learned that Christianity was about e the equality of God's children, but need to understand and accept slavery and the Holocaust. Jesus was about brotherhood, but I needed to understand about the programs and discrimination of Europe, the Third World, and my own country. The fact is that the Prince of Peace that I learned about in my home had his words and his life used for death, war, and destruction, not because he wanted it to be so. He gave his life so it wouldn't be but because others misused it for their own political reasons. The Word of God may be perfect. Man's interpretation of it has never been. I came here tonight, though not of your faith, with a simple plea. As you fight to free your countries, as you fight to take back your homelands, Take back your faith, because Islam has been stolen from you, just like the freedom of your countries. The Prophet's words of peace and love have been hijacked by mullahs, dictators, and tyrants. It was not to be, and it does not have to last. The mullahs of Tehran are your inquisition. They are to the people of Iran what the inquisitors were to Spain, what the pogroms meant to the people of Europe. We still fight that fight in Christianity to reconcile words of peace and love with the reality of war and hatred. That fight has gone on for decades. That fight now goes on in Islam. And if the world is to ever know peace and justice, as written in the Bible and the Quran, both of our fights must be won. It is not necessary, my friends, to be a Muslim, to know that the Quran does not sanction torture or murder. It is not necessary to know the Quran that it does not justify the monopoly of political power. It is not necessary to know the Quran to know that it does not justify the enslavery of women. Indeed, the Prophet spoke to exactly the opposite. Islam is about peace, brotherhood, and love. And if the world does not know it, then every person in this room needs to pledge their lives
to change these governments, end this tyranny, and let the world truly know the words of the prophet. The people of Iran have a special responsibility, not simply to themselves or their generation or their country, but to their faith. The mullahs' lives are a blasphemy on the prophet. Using the Quran to hold political power is a blasphemy on God. The prophet deserves more, and God demands more. My friends, I will leave you simply with a historical lesson that my country learned from the great philosophers of Britain and France. The place for clerics is to have the word of God reach the faithful. The place for politicians is to govern. And never the two shall meet. But if you seek to see a place where the faithful can live at peace, respecting each other, in brotherhood, where men and women live their lives as equals, without the torture, without the murder, without the abuse, in the community and love that the prophet foresaw and demanded for his people, look to Ashroth and liberty. There is a place where the Persian people live true to the prophet. It is not under the mullahs who have stolen their faith, hijacked and demeaned the words of the prophet. It is in those two small camps where the light of freedom still burns bright. Thank you. God bless you.